granted, no firmer, further permits expect to be granted in the next week or two, but I am happy that they're starting to remove some of that equipment and make some progress. Kristen, did you have anything you wanted to add? General. I'm General Walker. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think you summed it up pretty well just to let everybody know that um, right now um, we have not authorized, as you know, everything's kind of on a pause, stop work. Um, there is a demolition permit for 101 Francis that the, in the time that they've been getting all of the equipment off the site, the, uh, um, the it other... It hasn't been granted though, right? The demolition permit? It's been filed. It will not okay. be granted until we figure out a that few other uh, additional items. So okay. nothing, nothing this week. We'll see about next week. Okay. Okay. Everything's on pause. Um, I thought it was sent to to the whole board. Was I'll, I'll forward it to everyone. Okay. Oh, no. Perhaps I was mistaken. I it thought came it was sent in to everyone. Like it came in at four thirty this afternoon, so ago. it hasn't been long. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's, it's, Motion it's to continue this matter of the planning board meeting on March fifth, twenty twenty. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? 5-0. Motion to take items from F, G, H, I, and J, and K together and out of order for discussion purposes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5-0. Item 7F is a public hearing application for approval of special permit pursuant to section 12.1.5 PD special permit of the zoning bylaws 20 North Avenue Vulcan Forms Incorporated is the applicant. Um, item 7G is a public hearing application for approval of a special permit pursuant to section 1.5.1 light manufacturing and processing plants of the, zone, of the zoning bylaws 20 North Avenue Vulcan Forms Incorporated as the applicant. Item 7H is a public hearing application for approval of a special permit pursuant to section 1.5.2 laboratories engaged in research experimental and testing activities including but not limited to the fields of biology chemistry electronics engineering geology medicine and physics subject to the planning board making the findings set forth in section 8.3.7.4 of the zoning bylaws and subject to the applicable rules and regulations of the board and health of health of the zoning bylaws 20 north avenue vulcan forms incorporated is the applicant item 7i is a public hearing application for approval of a special permit pursuant to section 1.5.4 hazardous and toxic materials chemical use storage transport disposal or discharge of the zoning bylaws 20 north avenue vulcan forms incorporated is the applicant and item 7J is a public hearing application for approval of a special permit pursuant to section 1.5.5, generation or storage of hazardous waste limited to the volumes classified as very small quantity generator in the zoning bylaws, 20 North Avenue, Vulcan Forms is the applicant. And lastly, item 7K is a discussion, application for approval of a minor engineering change, 20 North Avenue, Vulcan Forms Incorporated is the applicant. Now, Chair, I make a motion to continue these matters to the planning board of any March comments on this from the chair? 2020? Um, I mean, from they're just not ready. Um, there has been just some discussion with the fire department, the building department, and the Board of Health on um, <coughs> these companies are really interesting and new and great, but there's also some interesting new and things we need to know a little bit more about before they move forward. So, um, okay, thank you. We will see them at our next meeting. Motion to continue this matter planning board meeting of March 5th, 2020. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Six zero. Next we have citizens time. If there is anyone that would like to speak on a matter that is not on our agenda, please come forward. Seeing no one, we will move on to announcements. Sorry, I was saying if um, the gentleman from the SUNU Solar Committee was here to take that out of order. Oh, I don't think he's here. here. That's at the end, your, end of your meeting. Announcements. Um, it, it's funny how much, well, before I get into announcements, it's not funny, I guess it's completely obvious how much you miss people that helped you prepare for these <laughs> meetings. Um, and Liz, Liz, Jen has been absolutely amazing as always, but um, Liz is out, in, um, out this week in Florida. So um, with that, I will continue. Um, she'll be back next week. Um, uh, announcements are assistant planner starts on Monday. So Brady Caldwell will be here Monday. Feel free to swing by next week to say hello. He's just getting his feet wet next week and trying to you know, figure out the ins and outs of the office. Um, also, uh, if you've been around the town clerk's office, they are very, very busily getting ready for early voting. Um, early voting is in this room. Um, it will start 
February 24th, and um, between 8 <coughs> and 5 o'clock, um, with the exception of Wednesday till 7, between February 24th and February 28th. Anyone can come in. You don't need to absentee. You just It's just early voting. Um, and then the official uh, election is Tuesday, March 3rd, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Burlington High School. And the last thing is Wednesday, March 4th, uh, the ZBRC will be in the Town Hall Annex meeting room B. Okay. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Yes. Yes. Yeah, just one thing to add. I'd like to extend uh, condolences to the Brown family on the passing of their father. Uh, the Browns are quite widely represented in both of our safety departments, both the police and fire. And I just wanted to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have any further announcements? No? Okay. We do not have any legal notices or non-approvals, so we'll move on to, or administrative matters, we'll move on to matters of appointment. Item 7A is a public hearing, application for approval of a site plan, 25 Blanchard Road, the trustees, the applicant. This is for Mary Cummings. Welcome. Thank you. Please come forward and, and state your names for the record, please. Thank you. Kathy McDonald, trustees of the reservation, Stevens Coolidge Portfolio of Properties, including Mary Cummings Park. And I'm Ray Donitz, uh, landscape architect, on the designer on the project. Okay. Well, we're very excited to hear what you have to tell us and show us tonight. Excellent. Um, I want to just start out by um, thanking you for your review of our proposed site plan um, with Ray Dunnett's, uh, Ray Dunnett's landscape architects, who will address the site plan in a minute. But I wanted to take this opportunity to thank both the town and the citizens of Burlington for their assist assistance to help make this restoration a reality. It's been going on for a while. Um, I was, I noted in, in 2016, the planning board here was one of the groups that recommended to the city of Boston on our behalf to take over the RFP for this park. And as you know, um, Boston issued that for the restoration and future management of the park, which the trustees has. And also a thank you for your continued support when we applied for, through the Commonwealth for the park grant which is going to help us restore this property. Um, we feel that our plans for this park will fulfill Mary Cummings' vision, forever opened as a public pleasure place, she said. Um, <coughs> and uh, the park will provide an, an array of outdoor recreation activities for residents, uh, visitors, as well as area business employees in, um, in Burlington. The trustees' long-term stewardship will ensure the care and uh, maintenance of this property in perpetuity. Uh, the park grant um, <clears throat> puts us on a short uh, timeline uh, to begin the removal of the extensive invasives in this, on this property, as well as to complete the construction by June 1. So it's a very fast-tracked process. Um, I'd like to introduce Ray Dunitz of our <coughs> LA, who will speak to the um, proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to speak into the mic, but... You can pick that up and hold oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, um, talking to Kristen, I um, wanted to give you an overview of everything that we're doing um, with this proposal. Um, the idea is that we create a welcome, welcoming uh area for, for visitors with a new gravel parking lot similar to what's at the Burlington uh, soccer field down here and creating an accessible path that will go around uh, pollinator meadows and o an open picnic lawn um, all the way over to the, the soccer fields. Um, in addition, we've created um, we're going to have a nature trail, science and nature trail, that leads to a boardwalk um, that overlooks the wetland for um, watching birds and and uh, getting kids out to nature. So to focus on um, what we're going to talk about tonight is the uh, the parking lot um, <coughs> along Blanchard Road. Can I? Can 
interrupt quickly? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, did you guys happen to bring any of the master plan yeah. booklets? Um, uh, well, just I, I think they're they're so well put together. I think it really gives a good image of the, the direction you guys are going. However, I don't want to distract from your presentation. We have a bunch. No, that's okay. It's we can review them in more detail later. They are. Um, they they really do. Thank you. Give you a good image of what you're looking at here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You can. I, we can pass the like, top ones. You can. Yeah. You can. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So uh, this is uh, enlargement of the parking lot that we're proposing. Um, it will, uh, it's designed um, almost identically to what you have already at the soccer field with a gravel parking lot with timber guardrails that um, prevent people from driving into the park. We're gonna have 21 uh, standard parking spaces which are um, nine by 20 and uh, two accessible parking spaces. And in those two uh, accessible parking spaces, we're going to have a, an accessible gravel material. It's called a cart pack mix. It's the same thing that we're using for the accessible walks um, that the trustees will maintain. Um, this is a one way in and a one way out. It's been sized to uh, adequately, adequately allow buses to drop kids off into the lot. Um, our intent, um, is to, there's Oracle's entrance is right across Blanchard Road. We're gonna center <coughs> our entrance on, on their curb cut so that, uh, you know, there's no traffic problems there. Um, this will all be green space. I didn't color it in. There'll be trees along the street. We're clearing um, much of the, the areas to the east and west of the parking lot for better visibility for cars pulling out and we're using all regulation. Uh, signage to indicate one way, one way in, stop signs, and uh, compliant uh, handicap uh, parking signs. The um, because we're using a gravel lot, the the spaces will be marked just like the soccer field with white stripes on the timber, so you know where to where you pull in. Um, and I believe um, I can open up questions if you if you have them. Or was there also something about the field that's nearby, or is that not part of this? Um, I was describing um, earlier to the chairman oh. the parking lot and the recreational and picnic and pollinator field with the picnic tables, yes, just I to can, can talk a little bit about that activity as um, the kind of front door. Yeah, so um, we have uh, created a Moan uh, picnic lawn that's right off the parking lot, um, which is on the accessible route for for wheelchairs that'll feature uh, four or five picnic tables with uh, trees for shade. Um, and this, um, if you look at the sort of elliptical shape, it opens up to the view of the Flyers Field. Um, and the rest of this whole area here will be cleared of all the invasive brush and replaced with pollinator meadows um, to attract birds and butterflies and, and that kind of thing. So it'd be a very natural site. Um, we will have some shade trees. Um, we're attempting to put in some buffer evergreen planting to screen out uh, views of the water tower and the cell tower that's close by. Um, there, I forgot to mention before, there will be another boardwalk um, similar to what's out there right now, but made wide enough um, to allow wheelchairs to, to cross. It'll have curbing on the side to prevent somebody from uh, Riding off the edge, but that one would be, you know, at grade basically. Okay, <coughs> thank you, Kristen. Did you want to add anything before we turn? Um, it so they have um, been with conservation um, for the last, uh, I think, the two, three meetings. Um, conservation has fully approved the work that they're doing out here. Um, there is the entrance um, to the soccer field that we built a while. Uh, <coughs> Ago, um, which was really, I mean, I mean, that made such a difference when people um, kind of said, "Oh, now I can go to the park like you couldn't have before." <laughs> um, but you know, now it's like an entrance. So I think that this new entrance and front door, and uh, you know, and just having the trustees 
have the, you know, the trustees sign is like, yes, of course, come in. So um, I think we're all really excited about, about that and you guys being here. And what has it been, three years that we've been talking about this? So, um, you know, good for you guys for raising the money to continue on. And, you know, I'm, I'm, we were happy to be supportive of the park grant to get this going. So um, overall, our comments, as I mentioned in the meeting preview, their curb cut was slightly offset from Oracle. Um, when you look at curb cuts, you either want to align them or just make them, you know, way off. So we did ask them to do that. I think in looking at this, it looks like you've shifted it down. Just not yet. Not yet. Okay. Oh. Um, <laughs> but but anyway, you you said you could, and that I would will. be an we issue. Will definitely will. Um, um, other than that, um, we've been working with them. They have a conservation restriction that they're working with the city of Boston. Um, we've um, continually kind of just voiced the want um, an ability to um, make sure that we can upgrade the upgrade the roadways create pedestrian paths, sidewalks you know it, we're, it's all in our all of our interest to do so um, but just make sure that if there's any um, you know next to construction <coughs> that the can that the um, conservation easement or conservation restriction just allows us to you know do some of that work to really enhance the network road work net roadway network around the area so um, other than that, we sub completely support it. We're glad that it's happening, and um, you know, if it looks as good as this um, brochure, and, um, that'd be great. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have any department comments or not? No. Okay. What well, do you? I don't know. Okay. No one uh, There are some comments. Okay. Oh, sorry, Jen. Oh, that's all. Sorry. <laughs> And by the time we actually need the computer, hopefully we'll have it. Probably since I took the chair, Joe. That's probably what it is. You threw everybody off. <laughs> this is big. There's a lot of comments in here. Um, um, they're all, I mean, you, you read them for sure, but they... Uh, yeah, I don't think... I, I think uh, Board of Selectmen, no comments there. Um, inspector of Buildings. Let's see. The proposed project will need to comply with the Architectural Access Board rules and regulations, and that would be 521 CMR, specifically uh, Article 19, titled Recreational Facilities. Otherwise, the Building Department has no objections. <coughs> DPW. Do you guys have the... Do, I, I'd rather not go through all of hey. these. They're all just standard, you know... Uh, so, DPW, so. Most of that stuff, I, I talked to them. Um, the one issue that we're, we're working on is the water. We, we are bringing water onto the site for future yep. use. Um, and we have to re-engineer the water meter, how we're going to house the water meter. Um, the drainage stuff, I talked to engineering. It's all gravel. It's pervious, pervious uh, paving. So. Yep. Okay. Can't get much better than so that. So you have the comments. You've sat down you and actually been working with engineering on the comments. Yep. So I won't bother going through yep. every one of them up here. All right. Uh, next one, police department. Uh, there is no comment. Fire department is favorable. Approval is submitted. Uh, Board of Health, favorable. Board of Health has no comments. Conservation is favorable. Conservation Commission issued an order of conditions of Burlington bylaw permit approving this project at its February 13th meeting. So that's it for comments, department comments. So. Thank you. Well, we have the mic, so if you have questions, please. Sure, just a couple things. I think it's phenomenal. I, it really looks like a nice project, and I'm sure it's going to get well used over there. And, um, there are a couple of things that I just had a comment on. I know that we, uh, Kristen had talked to you about lining up uh, Oracle's exit and entrance with that. <clears throat> Wondering if there's, because I'll, my guess is that Oracle, you know, people in those buildings across the street are going to probably really love to use this area. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering if there's going to be a safe walkway to get across the, across the street so they don't have to uh, drive across and maybe a delineation of some sort with a walkway. That would be up to... Well, I'm wondering if there's some way that maybe or maybe can work Oracle. Maybe I suggested that that, yeah, uh, that just not only painted, could, right? 
Mm-hmm. What's that? It could just be painted, right? Just paint, yeah. just something yeah. delineated so that it was, you know, because it, it's kind of a, that road is a little bit. Speedy. It's, yeah, it's well used and it's, and I think people tend to go a little bit fast on that road. I'd just be concerned about people walking across because I know it's probably, I'm sure they're going to want to love to use that at lunch hour and after work and pri- probably before work and things like that. So that's one of the comments. Um, the other one, I, as I was looking at this earlier today, came to mind that there is a grass area that you're having as a little field, it's a little play area, uh, and it's going to be a mowed grass mm-hmm. area, right? I wonder if in the future at some point if there would be a possibility of doing like a farmer's market in there. And, you know, there are a lot of businesses down in that area, and that road is, is a lot of traffic during the rush hour that passes right by here. It would probably be a great place at some point to do a farmer's market. Um, Part you know, of the design... Um, <coughs> goal for the trustees was to make this also a space where they might be able to put up tents and oh. um, events and that kind of thing so yeah just think. A- any thoughts in the future about I know we have um, it used they used to years ago when I was a kid there were gardens over there community gardens over there you know I also remember cornfields over there we used to get the corn stalks to make our scarecrows and things but <laughs> the um, <coughs> I know that there were community gardens, and that would be a cool thing to have at some yeah. point. Maybe you, you know, when we were going through the planning process, <coughs> that came up, and yeah. uh, there's a gentleman in town who uh, handles the community gardens. I yeah. Peter Capola. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he, um, we did have community gardens in the plan, and he said he can't fill the ones that he's got right oh. now. Really? So he, did, he didn't want them. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah, no, it's hard to get help for people to go over yeah. there. Yeah, and so. Um, it, it may come back in the future. That's why we're bringing the water over. Yeah. If there's a future need, um, it's a possibility. I don't think the trustees have the, the bandwidth to. to I, I would just comment the reason probably, and I've, I've used the community garden, and the reason why I hadn't gone back is because it's way in the back of Francis Wyman. Yeah. So, it's, so if there's a community garden closer to the parking lot, I think you probably get, Peter would get a lot more takers on that. You know, it's, it's I, location. I, so that's what I'm seeing here. Is I would bet. And, you know, and I would also you may want to transfer that over to here versus keeping that one. I think you may have, and away. that's exactly right. I think it's a better, accept, more accessible place, but it would be pretty cool to be able to have community gardens there and maybe have a farmer's market there and maybe work in conjunction with that. Uh, but I think even the, um, the, the people at Oracle, that is something I'm sure they would love to be, you know, maybe have their, you know, have them, Doing the garden, at yeah. garden, yeah. gardens over there, and you know, I, I, it's just there's, there's a lot of great possibilities over there. Yep. But this is really cool, that you, you know, you having Nothing this. to consider in the future. Yeah, right? I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I guess my point is I wouldn't write off the, the comment that he can't fill up the ones he has uh, is the reason why not to have it here. I think to have it here and then, you know, th- I think that's just a, more of a location uh, issue with with the current ones we have. It's not in the. the the optimal location. Well, and, and, and honestly, I mean, you know, Burlington people, there's a lot of Burlington people work at Oracle as well, but it, it would be so accessible to those people. They could be going gardening at, at lunch hour. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's just, it would be so accessible to a lot of people in that area that I, I, I think you'd have a way easier time filling those gardens than they would at the, you know, at the other ones over there. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's, that's it. And thank you so much. This is great. Thank you, Joe. I'm going to head the other way and ask Brenda if she had something she wanted to ask. No, no, thank no? you. Okay. Paul? I have a problem being brief, but I could spend <laughs> a lot of time on this because I was one of the original friends of Mary Cumming Park. I don't know if you know Kath Moore, yes. and I'm trying to think of the guy from Medford who was, they, they were going into the city of Boston and fighting tooth and nail from getting Boston to take this over, and they made some very aggressive moves against that park. The uh, uh, treasurer for the city of Boston said that that was their most valuable trust property, and that time they had it valued at $30 million. Mm -hmm. And they came after us in various different ways, and those people helped uh, helped to hold it off. But the thing that really kicked it off, and I'll take credit for that, was the city of Woburn rezoned their portion to open space. A little article on a newspaper, and I said, damn, we got them. (laughs) No, really. And it took me a long while, and some of the people on the board here will tell you, 
to get that, to get, we did not have an open space designation, so had to do that first. And I was chairman for a while, and we finally got that done. And uh, as soon as we got that done, through some tough opposition, town meeting voted like 94 to six to rezone it to open space, and it was all over. He <laughs> says it took a long time. He was a boy scout when he started that <laughs> Just about, but you can enjoy with me my sense of comfort and joy to see what this is gonna be like. Uh, and I, I knew once we got it rezoned, it had no value to the city of Boston. So it was just a case of how far it's gonna go. And I'm particularly people, that I, uh, pleased that you people are, are, are there and involved because of your reputation. Thank well, you. Thank you. we also would like to say that we're very thankful for the perseverance of the Friends of Mary Coming Park. So we have a park to restore today. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Nothing to add except uh, very exciting. Anything, anything we can do to improve this wonderful asset the town has <clears throat> is uh, awesome for the residents and everybody. So best of luck. Looks great. And uh, can't wait to go check it out when it's all done. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Bill? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just to comment that one of the areas that's not being improved, which uh, I always think was an area that is ripe for improvement, is, is that soccer field parking lot. And there are, if you look on page, I think that's 21 of the master plan, if that's the soccer field parking lot, is it? Gave all our copies away. Yeah, I mean it's very, it's it's. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, sure. it's very barren over there. And if you if you look at that, that's kind of your it's kind of your grand entrance as you come off of uh, South Bedford Street. I'll get you a second there to get 21. The bottom photograph on the bottom. Yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of you should be <laughs> like a aha moment. And when you go in there, it's kind of for me it would be kind of uh, right. <laughs> you, and uh, you've got the soccer field, which. It, it, could be a soccer field. There's no soccer nets really that I've seen a lot of times. It's just just that ring uh, ring path around there, and you've got a couple of trees there. But it, it, to me, for it, to say kind of Mary coming Park, I'd, I'd be looking for a little more. Is there a way to soften up or kind of give that that entrance more of a more more grand grander? And I mean that from a, a, a green. Uh, landscaping standpoint, natural link green. The landscape. new entrance or the existing? The, old, the existing entrance. That's the town of Burlington. Yeah, we're not, it's That's not us? Our, yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> it's on us. <laughs> Talking to myself then. Do that off. Okay. No, that's through our agreement with the city of Boston. Okay. That they allowed us so to do that. Maybe we can we can do something in the future to that because that's just, you know, to, to, to help that out, you have yeah. to build that up a bit. The only other comment I had is you, you are uh, looking uh, for the, the central field restoration, and that backs up to the to the new building in Northeast, and it looks like there's a trail that goes right into the, the Northeastern campus. Can you describe a little bit of what that trail is going to be, and where does that go? Is it a, a fence? Is it a gate? Is it accessible for people to come in and out? Currently, that is o only in the master plan. It's not going to be part of this project. Um, we just don't have enough funding. Mm -hmm. um, I think. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Jeremy's the the trustees. I was like, Thank I you. think I've walked it with so you. So okay. the um, so what's happened recently that that trail that that little piece that goes mm -hmm. right into the corner fence that's um, effectively gone. Northeastern took the gate off the fence and put a solid fence panel mm. in, so you can't walk through that point. However, down by the barracks building, if you're familiar with that, mm -hmm. on the left as you come in the driveway, there is now a new pedestrian gate into the park. And you can go through that gate and then walk along the fence to that same point and get into the field as usual. Um, eventually, we'll get to cutting a proper trail through the vegetation so you don't have to kind of mm -hmm. do this along the fence the along whole fence, way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a future project. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you, Madam Chair. The other Chair. thing that Northeastern did is put in a, a vehicle gate behind that bar barracks building as well to provide access potentially for the city of Woburn to get over to the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ernie? Yeah, just uh, two, two short questions. Uh, first, I noticed you said you're bringing a uh, one-inch water main in. Does that mean, will there be bathroom facilities on one of the parks? There is Irrigation. nothing. It's just for Irrigation. water. Irrigation, okay. And the second, uh, I happened to catch the uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting the other night, and I noticed that there was somebody there from 
what do they call it now? It used to be Burlington Community Life Center, and now it's uh, Children and Family, is that what it is? Youth and Family Services. Children and Family Services. And, and forever, since I've been in town, that's way back in 74, they've been running a, a what they call a dirt bike program on, on the Mary Cummings property. Uh, I'm not sure whether it was just run or was actually permission from the city of Austin. And he, I think that was through recreation. It was through rec, yeah, but it was. But I, I think it got discontinued. No, it's still it's still going. I actually talked going. to somebody about it. Um, I thought that they discontinued. And, it, and it's a challenge program where they take kids uh, between I think it's ten and fifteen, and they give them a certain goal, and if they reach the goal, then they're rewarded by using getting to use the dirt bikes. And I noticed that it was going to be discontinued. Or, yeah. Go ahead. Maybe you can elaborate. Um, on that for I me, think please. they'll be able to do that maybe Thank for you. one more year. But once the conservation restriction is in place, they will not be allowed to do that. Conservation restriction. Okay. Understand. Thank you. I'm all set. And thank you very much for coming forward to be uh, quasi-trustees, I guess, of the property. Is that is that how you'd phase it? I, I don't know. The city of Boston has, has said you are going to be the trustee of the trust now? or um, The city of Boston way? owns the right. property. Right. And... Um, eventually, when all the legal work is done, we will have a long-term management contract of the property. Management contract. So there, okay. that's with right. lawyers at the right. present thank time. Thank you very much, and <laughs> thank all the people who fought in the past to keep this the way it is. Excellent. Thanks. Can so I make two quick comments? Just what I had suggested that you people get in touch with Oracle, since they're across the street, for a possible contribution. And maybe part of that could be that they would put a nice walkway for their people. Because I saw that immediately as something that would be of value to them and to their property and so forth. So I don't know if you've done that, but I'd go ask them for money, really. <laughs> you know? No, they should be willing to contribute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, just so a couple of comments. I'm sorry? That uh, um, Millipore has donated that. I saw that on the plan. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I have the same concern that I do think we need to have a crosswalk there, and I was going to ask staff if that's um, something that we should reach out to Oracle about, or if this is something the town can do. I do think it's important that we have that marked for safety. Um, <coughs> it's just painting. No, no, I, my quick answer was yes, I think the town can do it. Okay. <laughs> um, I was okay. just trying to figure out... Um, well, we can take if that we, offline, what we need to do right. to get that done. But let's if just we can line it up, yeah. which yes, you can. You said They said they'll line it up. If then you line it up, we can, we can find, uh, get it painted. I think, I think we can <laughs> more easily get the crosswalk done. Because okay. there is a full sidewalk on the other side, okay. if you recall, okay. um, that Oracle And, and, built and I did want to just briefly mention, I know that sidewalks are not a part of this project, but it is our goal to eventually have sidewalks all the way down that road. But in addition, I also wanted to mention there's also a, a, another small parking lot over by Holly Glen, and eventually I'd like to see a, a, a sidewalk there. It's actually not a long distance from that parking lot to the entrance that's nearby, but right now people are walking in the roadway or on the grass um, in order to get from that parking lot to the entrance, and so that's not ideal. It's not that I think it's part of this, but sort of something to keep on the list. <laughs> Um, so again, I, I was in the office earlier and had the opportunity to look over this master plan previously, and it, it does look wonderful, and I'm very excited about it and very thankful that you're involved in working on this. Um, I wanted to see if there's anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this matter. I see, I know John Sachs is here, who is very involved with the Friends, and, oh, and hello, also, is, would you like to speak? Please. Feel free to come forward. <laughs> yes, please. Hi, my name is Jim Edgerly. I live uh, in Holly Glen, uh, as you just referred to it. And um, I guess I'd like, to, after the comment you just made, uh, I'd like to highlight the need, this kind of urgent need for sidewalks in this area. Uh, there's the reserve of Seven Springs on one side, and there's Holly Glen on the other side. And you can also get uh, also the people in. Uh, Seven Springs can come through that in the, to that same area, and there's not a single sidewalk in that area, and there's very, very busy roads, and we have this beautiful area, uh, Mary Cummings Park, which I go walk through all the time. I'm so happy to be near it, and I'm so grateful for the 
efforts that's being made. But the lack of sidewalks just is kind of at odds with all of this. Mm -hmm. And it really uh, limits the people who, who live around there to, to get out of where they live because you just can't safely walk on those roads anymore. I think when those roads were built, they had no concept that there'd be s such dense uh, 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 commercial development and residential development in the area. But I think to really utilize Mary Cummings Park to its potential for the residents and the people of the, who work there and live there to, to get access to it, there needs to be some sidewalks or even just trails inside the park right along Blanchard Road. Um, to, uh, uh, you know, trails that would That's follow right. the roadway mm -hmm. would, be, would make a big difference. Because mm -hmm. uh, right now you literally have to walk on the side of a very busy street where cars are going right. very fast. Very 40 quickly. miles an yes. hour at least, yeah. Yes, I agree with you. <coughs> that's yes. uh, that's going to be, e it's easier said than done down that area, and I'll tell you why, because years ago that was, a, that was a, uh, a county road. And if you look at how the road, <coughs> I've had occasion over the years when I was on the Board of Selectmen to see this, but you actually look where the pavement is, it's no, it, there's a lot of locations that's nowhere near the road layout, so it's going to, it's going to be really tricky to get a sidewalk in that area because it's you, you have to f determine where the road layout is and if you can fit a sidewalk in that area. I don't know if they're going to have to move some of the road and that it's it's. So it's been a um, <coughs> a you know one by one all the way from Middlesex Turnpike and down yeah. Waller Road trying to get easements where we need easements and agreement and. It didn't just it's a point I made with um, the conservation easement, whether it's a sidewalk along the road, if it's a path in the park, there's so, we need to create a, a pedestrian network, right. um, formal or informal, or whatever we can in the area. And But we need, because of the layout, we need help from the partners along the edges. Well, and I think the partners are a key, because it, you really would be, I'll be honest with you, with the road like that, you really should have the... If you can somehow move the walkway away from the road, because the road is a dangerous road to begin with, yes. even putting it, even putting it, because it's narrow and it's windy and mm -hmm. dark, and you know, if you could manage to put the walkways away from the roadway, you'd be better off, anyways. I so think it, you're right. Yeah. Right. So thank you. Um, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak on this matter? Okay. Um, Motion to close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? 7-0. Onward early. <laughs> okay. Motion, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the request of the trustees. <coughs> applicant. Applicant for approval of a site plan application for property located at 25 Blanchard Road, Mary Cummings Park, to permit improvements to the park, including the creation of a new parking area, visitor entrance, Signs, benches, picnic tables, trails, tree clearing, and native landscaping as reflected on the site plan entitled Mary Cummings <coughs> Park Improvements prepared by Ray du Duness. <laughs> Thank you. Landscape Architects Incorporated, dated January 22nd, 2020, the site plan consisting of 23 sheets subject to the following Revisions, terms, and conditions as printed? As amended. And amended. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 7 0. We're very excited. When do you expect this work to be completed? Well, June 1st. Oh, that's right. You said June 1st. I, I forgot that you said but that. We'll be Wonderful. extending a formal opening uh, announcement for probably October 1 for a grand opening. We thought we'd give everything a little bit of summertime to grow and uh -huh. have an opening in the fall. That's great. That's great. It, it, the October time frame would be nice because then we can announce it also at, at September town meeting. And oh, nice. That would be really nice. Okay. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Come to us anytime. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mm. All right. Moving on. Motion to take items. Motion to take items 7B, 7C, 7D, and 7E together for discussion purposes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 7-0. Item 7B is a continued public hearing. Petition to amend the zoning bylaw Article 2, definitions, and Article 4, use regulations, to address and define uses pertaining to parking structures submitted by Escadrille Realty LLC. 
Item 7C is a continued public hearing, petition to amend zoning bylaw Article 5, dimensional regulation schedule as it pertains to parking structures submitted by Escudo Realty LLC. Item 7D is a continued public hearing, petition to amend the zoning bylaw Article 7, parking structures to modify the requirements for parking garages submitted by Escudo Realty LLC. And Item 7E is a continued public hearing, petition to rezone property to the general business bis Excuse me, General Business BG District 1 to 3 Ray Avenue. Ray Avenue Trust is the applicant. Welcome. Good evening, Madam Chairman. Um, I'm the first year to the applicant, also Michael Murray. Um, I can recall uh, we were before you back in either November, early December. Uh, we had initially filed these um, proposed amendments for the January time. staff yesterday um, so tonight we were hoping maybe we could just address and, and get some feedback from the board on the issues of uh, we've identified potential areas in town where were this to be approved might be eligible for the type of parking structure that we're talking about mm -hmm. we'd like to spend an analysis on that um, there are some other issues that we've been talking about in addition to those things like added green space and things of that nature that I think we need some more fleshing out. We're hoping to sit down with the subcommittee over the next week or two and get, get into that a little bit more. So we'd like to present that back to you as well. Um, but we thought tonight might be a good chance to at least get some initial feedback on uh, all these uh, the other areas in town that might be eligible for this type of a structure where it's uh, close to the past. So, uh, with the chair's permission, I'd like Mike to kind of walk us through that. He has a better handle on it certainly than I do. Okay. Um, when you say walk us through, you mean through all of the properties, or did you mean something else? Um, yeah, that was. Because yeah. I uh, want to hold off on that for a few minutes. We can sure. do it, but I don't want to start off with that. If we could, sure. Could, However you wanna. could I just first ask staff if they wanted to just give us a quick update on where we stand? <laughs> sure. Um, <coughs> so these four articles were submitted for January, continued um, to May. The articles are um, the definitions for, for um, structured parking, the um, some dim Article Five dimensional criteria, um, obviously the in the use table as to allow for structured parking in the BG district. Or, I'm sorry, allow for the parking deck option, which is the single level in the BG district. But identify those in the um, identify the other the other uses, um, as well as have an amendment to Article Seven. So we met yesterday. We talked about um, Article Seven, um, some of its setbacks and green space and some other things. Um, we want to flush that out a little bit more. But what um, and what I felt like that we really haven't had a good discussion yet, and you know from kind of the discussions I have had, it seemed like a good opportunity to have the discussion with this board overall. Um, it seemed like there was some favorability toward the, the proposal that's being offered, but really to understand the impact of a change to the parking deck in the BG zone and based on the propo proposals and um, setbacks and some other criteria, what does that look like? And what does that look like for number of sites? Um, and kind of walk through and understand that aspect of it and kind of get comfortable or as may not get comfortable raise questions um, from the board as to what are some of the issues surrounding that so we can um, begin to kind of process that information as we continue to work out the details of some of the other aspects that um, that are part of this proposal um, and kind of another sidebar the um, zoning bylaw review committee wanted to take over the definitions and feel that it's important to bring it forward we have structured parking in the bylaw right now we have no definition they felt that was something that needed to be addressed so what you will see is they have submitted um, very similar slightly modified definitions that will be submitted under the zoning bylaw review um, body themselves those are officially open with you at the second meeting of March um, but this will stay kind of on until that opens. Um, so, um, and then as mentioned that 
we would like um, Ernie and Barbara <coughs> as a subcommittee and anyone else who's interested to sit down um, before our next meeting just to kind of flush out some of the other dimensional criteria, um, Article 7 parking criteria, and some of this green space conversation a little bit more um, before our next meeting. So, okay. Thank you. So we're focusing on just kind of B BG, um, the parking deck use, mm -hmm. kind of how that looks in town. So before we jump in, I wanted to sort of take the temperature of the board a little bit on something, um, because I don't know what the rest of the board is thinking on this. I know what I'm thinking, and I want to just sort of take the temperature. How many sites does this involve if this were to pass? Is it 18? It's, it's, it's been down to 18 since 18. the last time okay. we came in front of the 18. full board. Okay. Yeah, I just, just to explain why it went to 18, because before it was about 43. Right. You we, we changed the buffer requirement mm -hmm. to not just say that the parking structure itself couldn't be within 200 feet, but the lot that it is on cannot be right. within 200 feet of a residential zone. Right. So that's how we've gotten down to that number. Right, which, which I appreciate. Um, what I want to ask my fellow board members is to weigh in on the following. What, what I'm look, I look at this and I see the need. I see a business that's been in Burlington for a long time that's um, beloved by many people who live here. I go there for my birthday every year. <laughs> and yes, you have a parking problem because my husband had to park at Total Wine and, and come and get me. Oh. Um, and I want to find a way to make this work for you. My concern is not this property, it's the, the domino effect on all the other properties. And I would like to see if there's some creative way that we can resolve this on your site without involving all those other properties. And mm. I want to find out if my fellow board members share my concern about those other 18 properties, because if it's only me, then let's, then let's go through and talk about all, every single one of them. But if we all kind of, if anyone else shares my concern or if majority of them share my feelings on this, I don't know if it's productive for us to look at each individual site and, and how that would impact. So I guess I'm, I'm sort of turning that over to my board members to see um, where everyone is on that. Who wants to jump in first? I'll jump. Okay. Um, I, think it, I, I think it would be worthwhile to see which 18 properties are going to be affected. Mm -hmm. and, and that would at least help me make up my mind more as to whether we should try and narrowly focus it, as you're, as you're saying, uh, just the applicant in front of us, or whether there's a problem with, with it happening on. Right, so perhaps we should list them at least. Yeah, okay. at, at I least. Understand yeah. That. Anyone Thank else you. want to weigh in before we? Okay. Oh, I, yes. No, I just want to ask about the subcommittee. Mm -hmm. Who's on it, please? Uh, right now, Ernie uh, and Barbara and I. Right and now. You, okay, because I, I, I'm not really up to speed on this, mm -hmm. and I want to go to the subcommittee meetings and you know get a better mm -hmm. handle on what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so, if Liz would give me a call, mm -hmm. Liz, hello. Yeah, I'm up to speed. Uh, <laughs> But uh, just give just give me a call as to when the subcommittee meeting is, if you would. Of course, Thank always. You. Okay. Actually, um, I'd like to know that too. If we could just send that around. Yes, yes. Every, I think oh, yeah. everyone's Everybody's very interested. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. We will set it around and we'll okay. make a so personal phone was call. It, were there minutes from the last subcommittee meeting? Uh, the last subcommittee meeting was combined with the zoning board. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. They have minutes. They would be in their minutes. And when I see them, I will forward them. Thank yes. You. Um, I don't think I've seen. So them. why don't we? Try and just, if you could list, or you can, and you can quickly show the properties and, and help us locate them in our minds. Sure. Um, yeah. As Ernie requested. Um, hold on, let me. Uh, we have them um, up on the screen. <laughs> we'll make it over. Uh, don't worry about reading what it's, uh, I mean, uh, but Mike, you want to start? Yeah, so. Uh, hold on, let's go to the top. So, and then just say no when you're done describing. Sure. I'll scroll down for you. So this first shows the escadrille and the lot in purple is one through Ray Ave. I'm considering that one okay. parcel. And then 20 
Cambridge Street, which is the cycle loft, that's another parcel that would meet the criteria of being outside of the buffer area. And then to the next page, these four properties are right across the street from Cafe Escadrille. Um, a couple of little strip malls there. There's a few different buildings. Um, so those would be outside the buffer zone as well. So all these properties uh, would be allowed just based on where they are according to the buffer. Um, and then the next page, so that's uh, 36 Cambridge Street. So it's um, that's the bank. I want to call it Selim Savings, but I have a feeling they changed their name. That's next to Crossroads Plaza. Uh, and then the next slide, I think it should be Wall Street. So these three properties, 2, 10, and 20 Wall Street, so where paparazzi used to be. <laughs> um, and then the plaza where the Dunkin' Donuts and Chuck E. Cheese used to be. And then I think it's a medical center at 20 Wall Street. And then the next slide, that's Wayside Commons. That would be outside the buffer area. And the next slide um, moves over to the Middlesex Turnpike. So to get an idea for where we are, the, the 51 to 53 Cambridge Street, the largest parcel shown there in red is the Bed Bath & Beyond site. Um, and then the 47, the smaller one there is, there's a small little plaza there. I'm not sure what stores are there. And I think that's where the real school is. That's across the street. Oh, across oh, oh sorry, I thought you were across. That's the new, Trader it's Joe's a new restaurant. It's the old subway. Oh, yeah. oh that's right. right. Health Remember, you know what I'm talking about, they were, Partners. okay, yeah. thank you. So the Bed Bath & Beyond is the, is the same yes. as Trader Joe's. That's Trader Joe's, yeah, okay. That's, that's, that's right. the bigger parcel there. Right, okay. Yeah. okay. And then 54 as well? I think there's like, a, there's a FedEx there, or used to be a FedEx Used to be Kinko's, you're right. It's probably been gone for 12 years. Yeah, that's the 56, right? It's on the other side. Um, and then I think, uh, oh no, and then yeah, the, the biggest one, the mall. <laughs> so that's all the mall parcels. Again, I'm, I'm taking that as one parcel because it's designed that way. And then the last one would be, uh, actually I think it's 90 to 108, but it's the, the, the Barnes and Noble and Yard House lot there. So I think, I think that's all of the parcels that would be outside <coughs> of the buffet area. Information question, if I could, Madam Chair. Yes. It, it, so it, but there's also another restriction, isn't there? Uh, FAR restriction? Uh, it's a building to ground area ratio because okay, the building. DG doesn't have a floor area ratio right. uh, restriction. Okay. So it's the, yeah, the restriction would be to the existing um, requirement in the BG is to have a 33% building to ground area ratio. Right. So we propose that if you, were to include a structured parking on the lot that it would reduce it to 25% so that it wouldn't just be a situation where all right, well, we're adding parking so now we can have more building too. So you're actually reducing what you could have as far as footprint. And and would, sorry, go ahead. Would all these parcels be capable of doing that? They're less than 25 now, no. is that what you're saying? No, some of them would be further restricted by that. Unless Th they these, these, are, these are to just show just the buffer. Just the buffer that restricts them. There's, and the <coughs> numbers are on here, so we could go back up and I could tell you which ones currently are already over 25%. Yeah, but, but that we can have change. To, that can change. That could change. Yeah. That's why yeah, I showed them, yes. that's why I showed them yeah, all. Yeah, you're huh. better off showing the way yeah, you did. Yeah, I, I didn't want to say that it Because redevelopment could occur. Yeah, it could, yeah. it could be knocked down yeah. and done over, so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I see. Can I ask a question? Of course. So that being said, when you say certain ones that you're lumping together, like you're, the Burlington Mall or you know City Escadrille, that is that is that to say because they're three separate or several separate parcels, you could put a parking structure on each one or only one on the parent parcels, uh, for lack of better terms. Good question. Excellent question. <laughs> Because I think that would make a that would that would change my opinion on say this versus you know or or the escadrille which I think we could also expand the facility inside and that would be great too. Just finding a seat in the escadrille is kind of hard. Just <laughs> throwing that out there. Yeah. Um, well, for speaking for the escadrille, we would need to combine that other lot with our lot to to have all these criteria and be met. It would make sense. And do we know if all of the criteria would be met on each one of these parcels, or would they need the entire, you know, again, calling it a more of a parent parcel with all all of the lots, or 
For the mall, you mean? Yeah. I the way I looked at the mall um, was as one parcel because that's how the site plan takes it. The the current site plan that it shows, and that's you know when they talk about what their building to ground area ratio is, what their parking ratio is off the site. So, just I. I think we might have to ask town council that question. Yeah, I, 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 Can I you think that that's the question. I'm, I'm so just, I'm I heard the end of it. Would the criteria would this if we took so we're looking at 98 to 108, would we be looking at potentially so 10 parking structures to or each one three. of these lots or yeah, three? Mall. Or do we need the entire and again, for lack of better terms, parent parcel, all of these combined? to meet the criteria for one parking structure. Because that would be my concern is that, you know, we're saying, and, and granted, yes, we know the mall is, is, is what it is today and that's how the, that property is being utilized. 15 years from now, the mall could say, hey, you know what? We're, on a, we're just not gonna do the mall anymore and now we're gonna make it whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we obviously wanna look at the, you know, at the future uh, use of these spaces. Um, there isn't the anything place. in here at this point that they needs to be aggregated into a parking structure. I mean, if you wanted to build five, you could build five. I mean, it, the mall itself, though, in terms of the way zoning works on the mall, um, which is a little bit unique to um, other areas, but the mall is, for zoning purposes, um, calculated as one. So those, all of those parcels are one for zoning purposes. So, you know, if it's 25%, I think it's 22%, so 20, so you can go up to 25% under the current proposal. Whether that's one structure, a couple structures. Well, is that, is that, uh, is that simply because There isn't anything that controls Is that, that because it's one site then? And it's because it's one combined and unified site. Right, but, the mall, but, yeah. but that can change as well, I'm sure. It could, oh, of course. Yeah, right. So I mean, all of these, I'm just saying the mall in itself right now as we calculate it. Um, you know, so, so um, there isn't anything that would control that other than, you know, market force isn't right. going to build a whole bunch of small garages. But who knows? Well, but yeah. I, yeah, but I think that that's something, you know, the okay. subcommittee might want to take that's into where, consideration. That's where I'm, wh oh, what I'm running question. up against. Thank I you. feel like we're opening Pandora. Pandora's box here. This is 18 sites, each of which is unique and could be changed in the future. It's it's very difficult to anticipate what the effects of these changes could be on all 18 sites. I would prefer to find a way to legally resolve your problem and allow you to do what you need to do on your site without involving the other 17 sites. Now, I'm not saying that's easy, um, I don't know how far you've gone down that road to see if there's another way to do it. Madam Chair, may I? Yes. I, I, a question is, as we, as we talk about this and, and going back in history a little bit, when you did the addition on the escadrille for the function room, did you have that property next to it that, that, that was a satellite parking or was that acquired before or after or did you have that all the time there? Uh, the property that's the, the extra parking lot now, it, at the time that we got the banquet facility approved, it was a, there was a building there. Yeah, okay. And as the construction was going on, as we finished the renovation, uh, the tenant actually moved out and we decided to knock that building down for additional parking. But it wasn't part of the original proposal. Yeah, I didn't think so. But it was before yeah. we really went live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If that answers the question. It does, thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I'm not sure I really am getting a feel for what the board's temperature is on this. Well, I, 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 I kind of asked that question because I'm saying, you know, that's how that evolved over time. And now you're adding, you know, the <coughs> cycle loft building to that property. And then you're saying, so you need extra parking for that. And so I just wondered how that evolved uh, previously because I didn't remember that there's a parking lot there before you did the, uh, mm -hmm. the addition, thinking back when we used to go to the, the, the ice cream mm -hmm. back in the day. Um, so now I'm trying to think of down the next building down. What what's housed there? Is that that's not great. <coughs> what's uh what's that next building the next down? Next building right? down is um, the, the, the scale manufacturer. Okay. Um, work with scales. I don't know exactly what they do. I thought that was yeah, it's like a photocopying place, isn't it? Uh, no, that. On the, the next 
two next one down. down so, you know, know as we kind of think of how yeah. that evolved initially, maybe, you know, you can kind of maybe put feels out there to say how, how they're doing, where they're in their business, and maybe that's an opportunity, you know, long term. Madam Chair, to get to answer your question, yeah, if there's a way to solve their problem without involving all 18 sites, that would be great. I think we all want to see, the, you know, the Eskadil is beloved in this town, and Eskadil does, does a lot of things for a lot of uh, you know, organizations in this town. So if there's a way to do it, I just don't know how to do it. Neither do I. <laughs> um, and if we could find a way to get them their parking and not have to worry about if malls <coughs> die and five parking garages pop up, that would be ideal, but I don't know how to get there without. I, I don't either. <coughs> I think what I'm asking is for the subcommittee, should our focus be on trying to resolve this problem on this single site, or should our focus be <coughs> do we want to make this change that affects all 18 sites and look at all 18 sites? And I, that's kind of the question I'm asking of the board. I'll answer it. I, I would like to hear all you your answers. You can see I'm easily confused. <laughs> no, I, to try to envision in, on all these other sites what it implies is too much for my brain at this stage <laughs> of my life. <laughs> I would, I would, I would feel much more comfortable dealing with the escadrille. Okay. Brenda, did you want uh, to? Yeah, no, I mean, I, my thoughts are the same way, and I feel like it's a big, mm. that's a huge undertaking and a lot of thought process and mm -hmm. it's a lot e even at this stage of my life. <laughs> but I would rather, I mean, clearly they, they there's a, a need for parking here and I think that that, you know, the fact that they acquired the loft, cycle loft, I think is even more reason uh, that building, it, it, it needed, that problem needs to be fixed. It, sh it probably should have never been built like that but it, now it's a problem that needs to be fixed and I think this would be a way to address all those parking concerns. So I, I want to see if, I would love to see if there's a way we can just address it with this site instead of incorporating all of the rest of the town into it as well. I, mm -hmm. I okay. share that thought, that uh, concern. I guess I'm kind of fighting two sides in my head. You know, I, I definitely agree, you know, Escadrille definitely needs the parking. Um, I don't want to see a, a lot of parking garages all, you know, scattered amongst Burlington, but if the mall needed one, you know, which I think that they could, especially if we're, you know, we're adding all these outdoor, you know, opportunities, um, is there a way that we can, I don't know, I guess, pinpoint these 18 properties and if each one of these properties needs something, they need to, you know, they give them versus, I, I don't know exactly what that looks like, you know. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure, would the mall like to have the ability to build parking garages? I bet they would. <laughs> um, but I, I just feel like I don't want to open that door before, they haven't even asked for it yet. And, and no, there's, <laughs> right, they're listening. But <laughs> um, <coughs> I'm just, I feel like it's a, I just, it's hard, a lot to wrap your mind around and how each site will be impacted mm -hmm. is very difficult to anticipate. We don't know what 100%. people will do with them in the future. Can you, uh, uh, maybe, uh, <coughs> we're only talking, in the BG zone, we're only talking about parking decks, not parking garages, am I correct? In this conversation right now, we're just yes. talking about uh, parking According to the proposed. Decks. Yes, a one story parking, parking deck, okay. yeah, structured parking. Not parking garages, I right? Mm -hmm. and I do notice it's, it says by special permit. Is there any way, to your point, to tailor the special criteria, special permit criteria? Can you have special, special permit criteria? In other words, just <laughs> super <laughs> special. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can have, you can yeah. have parking structure special criteria. That's, that's what I'm yes. saying. Yes. That's, that's, that's Article saying. 7. So is there any way that, I mean, maybe, maybe that's even too I don't draw. know. I mean, it's certainly <laughs> something to think about. We're just I throwing them out. I also, I mean, experience tells us that even when it's a special permit, anytime we say <coughs> no, we get sued. That's what happens when we mm. say no. Sometimes, yeah. 
since I've been here, it pretty much happens. Yeah, and I, th it, I think when you're we get right. we say no, we get sued, and we don't want to get sued, and we don't want to drive up the town's legal costs. I just feel like even if we have to jump through some hoops, if there's some way we can do this for the Escodol site without involving all these other sites, it just seems like that makes more sense. To I would me. agree. I would so agree. maybe that can be our focus. Yes, Tom. Um, <coughs> I think we'd be fine with that if there is such a <laughs> right. solution. Um, <laughs> I would just like to point out, I, we're talking 18 mm -hmm. um, potential uh, locations. I think uh, some of them, from a practical standpoint, are eliminated. I, I mean, using the, the bank there that's next to, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you put up Pretty a parking site. structure, there's no room <laughs> to put a building on it. So, right. so, I mean, obviously the mall, Wayside Common, some of those larger areas are, would be in play, and those are legitimate concerns, and I, I, we certainly appreciate that. But I don't think we're going to be seeing 18 of them around town. Uh, I hope not. Just looking <laughs> yeah. at this list of, these list yes. of, you know, the smaller lots just wouldn't be able to house a building and a. And but a you never know there. what might happen in the future with combining lots and tearing buildings down and building something completely and even, different yeah, that we don't right, imagine but right now. If there were a couple of them adjacent, they combine yeah. one. Right. There's not going to be 18. There might be five. Yeah. Wait, so I, could I, you put a parking structure with a building above it? No. Like we're parking underneath it. So we're not talking about. Is that a it's deck? Or yes, it's not that's a deck. not considered a deck. That wouldn't that's fall under the, that the yeah. under integrated or structured. Okay, all right. I just wanted to clarify. So anyway, I think mm. what I'm hearing from <coughs> the board is let's try sure. to work it out without involving the other <coughs> sites and see how far we get. And that's fine. And that, I mean, right. frankly, that's why we kicked it over till May so we could yeah. have these types of discussions right. because we understood that there are some issues out there. And okay. If I. Uh, we can set a subcommittee meeting up. We can all put our heads together and maybe, Let's do that. maybe come up with something. Let's do it for next week and yeah. get started. Can we do that? Uh, okay. Oh, well, we'll be fine. Uh, I was okay. just wondering how many, did they have a projection <laughs> of how many spots they need now and to take them into yeah, the future? <laughs> yes, uh, if we're looking at the parking deck, would add approximately 34 parking spaces, and that would put us, I think it puts us like, two spots over our maximum parking ratios for the site itself our parking ratio is kind of it's more complicated than a, because we have the other parking the other lots on Ray Ave that we accommodate like their extra parking accommodates us and it's part of our parking block when we include our numbers so if you take everything together <coughs> which is how we've done it in the past it, it, I think it's two or three parking over the maximum well, why don't you start with the max you're going to need, and then we'll <coughs> negotiate, that, negotiate you down to yeah. what, we, what you're going to get. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. the max we would be able to attain at any level. I could see it set back on that lot, not necessarily on Cambridge Street, right on Cambridge Street. Oh, and I not, think it would be Ray much Ave. less. It's on Ray Ave. Ray Ave. It would be no, over I'm, the overflow parking. Or are you talking about cycle lot? Yeah, on, no, on that part of the lot, you know, I could see a, I, I could see a structured parking garage because, you know, it wouldn't have to be enormous. They're talking about putting it on the, the piece behind. of property on Ray Ave that's behind the Escadrille site. So it's, and you wouldn't see it from Cambridge Street, I don't think. Not much. Not, not really. Yeah. You'd see like the, you'd yeah. see the cars a little bit. where they're yeah. you'd see it, but it would almost look angle. like a continuation of the parking yeah. lot that we have now. It wouldn't be out front on Cambridge Street. Well, unless they're going to have, uh, you know, uh, little cars running around to take you from halfway down Ray <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> do well, whether you like it or not, there's a lot more senior citizens do have in town. Order. We do have valet. <laughs> yeah. So I think we have our marching orders, right. and um, let's set up a meeting. Absolutely. Get yeah, started. Okay, thank right, you. If we can do it for us, too, that would make it simpler for me, it for certainly sure. certainly would, yeah. So, um, but... That would look like, but if we can come up with something, that we would be might fine. have to <laughs> twist ourselves into pretzels. But let's <laughs> give it a shot. All right, creative. <laughs> yeah. I would, I would like to applaud um, Michael Murray's um, efforts to do yes. the this much analysis. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, we get a lot of applicants that are like, "I want to do this," and we say, "Okay, well, we need data, and we need analysis, and we need to figure out what this means for everything else." And um, it, you know, without really doing much of anything thing other than saying just that he brought in all this stuff so I, I just want to thank you for yes thank you, thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. so um you can contact the planning office yeah, we'll tomorrow and we'll set it up okay thank you thank you thank you thanks guys
Okay, so I think I need a motion. Why don't you like to make a motion to continue this matter to the planning board meeting of March 5th, 2020? Second. All those in yes, favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Seven zero. Okay. Um, next up. Next, let's see. Motion to take items 7L and 7M together and out of order for discussion purposes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seven zero. Item 7L is a continued public hearing application for approval of a special permit pursuant to section 4.3.2.6, outdoor storage of supplies and equipment incidental to permitted uses, subject to requirements for location, lighting, screening, fencing, cover, and safety precautions of the zoning bylaws, 376 Cambridge Street, the Granite Place is the applicant. And item 7M is a continued discussion application for approval of a minor engineering change, 376 Cambridge Street, the Granite Place, Inc. is the applicant. So we've been waiting for a long time to resolve this, but I, I was told that we've made tremendous project pro progress, and I'm looking forward to hearing more. And I have brand new concrete in my kitchen. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> if you get this done, you can get in your kitchen, your garage, and everywhere else. Made it house. Years ago, I got in trouble when I gave a, another planning board um, Valentine's candy on Valentine's Day at a hearing, and they returned it to me a month later with a very nasty note. So I've been oh, very yeah. careful not to get into those kind of issues. <laughs> did, you, did you save it? I mean, we'll take it. The people <laughs> in the office loved it, you know. So, but anyway, what was the what note? Take your candy and give us the granite. <laughs> <laughs> was it anybody that's on this current board? No, no, it was another <laughs> city and town, uh, a little bit west of here. So I like strawberry creams. <laughs> okay, I'll keep that in mind. Um, Good evening, my name is Frank DiPietro, uh, for the record, with the BSC Group. I'm here representing the Granite Place. Uh, it has been a, a long time. There's been a lot of stuff going back and forth. And I think, um, first of all, uh, on behalf of my client and myself, uh, thank the board for its patience and certainly thank the staff for their assistance in sort of guiding us along here. Um, it's <coughs> very interesting when you folks you're working with as clients have no idea of any kind of regulations or zoning, and it happens more often than not. Chris and I were talking about that. So, um, where we're at is um, just to remind folks that it's been a while. Uh, the Granite Place is located at 376 Cambridge Street. Um, the Northern Drive here is 62, and that signal is right over this location. Um, this used to be Lester's. It's now okay. This used to, yeah. This used they're here, there's another 376A, that used to be Lester's, it's now a bug place. They're in this building here, the cleaners is over in here. Um, their background is it's a granite uh, showroom in manufacturing, they have fabrication on the building. The building's divided into three um, areas, of sort of the, this portion of the site is where the, where, uh, the showroom is, this is where the fabrication is, and this used to be Mother Thrift. They're gonna be taking over the entire building. At this point in time, the interesting news is they've got a facility in Wilmington that is currently being um, upgraded and fitted up for them. Uh, they've also discovered that there are regulations and zoning things they have to comply with in <laughs> Wilmington no, as well. No. No. Uh, so they were looking to try to be able to move the facility, uh, the fabrication facility out by April. That may not happen. They're working as, as much as they can. Right now, the fabrication has been limited to what they had before. Uh, there's been no expansion like they had talked about. They are slowly moving out um, the outside parking area. As you well know, has been full of granite, slabs, other stones. They've been moving them out as they um, use them up <coughs> for the facility. They're, they're slowing them up. And what they are doing is they are now taking over the entire other two areas. Um, the old mother thrift, they're beginning to move some of the slabs into that area. When they move their fabrication out, they're gonna move most of the other slabs. They'll have some interior uh, devices to move them around. They may still be using the lift trucks they have right now, but they're trying to get rid of those and minimize those as well. So their future plans will be um, the entire building will be a formal showroom in this area, and then they'll have other places they can take people to show the granite in the other, uh, roughly about 60% of the building. That being said, um, what, we've done is take 
taken the old plan we had that had all kinds of fencing and huge areas of outdoor storage and sort of cut back what we're doing. Um, we originally had in the front some upgrading of the parking for handicap accessibility. That's been undertaken. That part's done. Uh, there's no longer going to be a fence around the perimeter here. What they're looking to do really is to pull uh, any of the grant. They might have a small area up against <coughs> the building, no farther than 10 feet from the edge of the building, to keep some outside uh, pieces of granite. Uh, they are proposing to put in a dumpster that will be enclosed in this corner. They may, in fact, move it farther back, just because this is a little bit difficult to get the trucks in. But they may move it farther back. Originally, there was one back over in this area here. They may move it, but it'll be totally enclosed. They are going to maintain the drive aisle through here. They're going to basically maintain the parking that's along this area at this point in time. And they'll have the overhead doors that will be maintained. That's really what they're looking to do at this point in time. Um, we're going to preserve all the zoning setbacks we talked about way back when, residential from Van, de Gra uh, Van Norton uh, Drive. Um, they're going to be limiting the outside activity. They would like, in the front of the site here, sort of, um, there's a couple of granite slabs in an A-frame. Um, they would like to maintain those, but um, they need a little bit of, I think, attention, maybe some landscaping or something like that. So what I've done, I've had some discussion with Kristen <coughs> over the last uh, few days. Um, the owner, Carol Gomes, apologizes when I spoke with her today. There were about, sounded like 12, the voices of 12 kids in the background. <laughs> it's school vacation week, and so she's not able to come tonight. Sure. But we did talk about um, looking to get some feedback from the board as to what the concerns may still be at this point, then working with the staff between now and your next meeting to resolve these items, coming back with a little bit updated plan and trying to address to the extent we can your concerns and the issues that the board may have. So, Thank you, Frank. Sure. Kristen? Sure. Uh, we started this in 2018. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, so it's a much scaled back proposal. Um, just so actually, can you hold, stay that? Can you open the PDF? Yep. So um, this is the plan that Frank put together, but with my edits on it. Um, so I think that the 10, 10 foot along the building area for the, the slab area is fine. Um, I do want to understand a little bit more about um, where the loading doors are um, and then kind of how right now they have kind of those A-frame stands mm -hmm. that they're putting the slabs on. I want to know a little bit more about how their position, how many, just what are we talking about here, especially between the width of the doors. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Um, the concerns of the abutters were largely part of um, the fabrication business, and I think we all kind of were a little bit frustrated with that type of business so close to a residential neighborhood. Um, and the outside washing of materials and all that stuff. So all of that is gone. Um, however, they still will be moving around less than they are now, but still moving around outside some forklifts of granite. And um, in order to buffer some of that, um, we want to have the a display of the times that they can be doing that. Um, as well as they cleared from, if you look at the plan um, right past it between the Parking spaces in Van Norden, a small area past the parking spaces, they kind of cleared and started putting granite in that area. I think that all should be revegetated, um, including um, arborvitaes or some evergreens. They they are not they. Um, if you remember when they before it was like an eight foot fence. I don't, you don't need an eight foot fence, um, and they don't and they're not proposing a fence now. And I I, I actually think vegetation is a better sound buffer than a fence. I mean, if you want to do little bit of both. Um, I do think there needs to be vegetation around wherever the dumpster area is. So Frank, if you're moving it to the back, I do want to add some vegetation around that area. Um, so I think that should um, happen. Uh, and then if you look at 
the front of the site as in this front corner. Um, right now, and I'll show it to you in a second after I go from this plan, but right now there's, it's kind of, eh, the front of the site's the front of the site. It needs a little love. There's a lot, a little more dirt than actual green. Um, and there's kind of dirt there. They have granite slabs in this area right now. And then if you go to the corner, right, it's a little quicker now, right there, it's just kind of this piece of curbing with like a yew tree in it. It's, there's probably a tricycle in it if we show you the picture, but um, it's, you know, it's, and then go here, go back to street view. Um, so one, um, I think, yeah, so stay there. So um, one, I think we need to do some sort of sound buffering in the back. And in the front, it's outdoor display of merchandise. Is this good at granite slab? Yeah, I guess so. So outdoor display of merchandise. Yes, no, how are we gonna, if it's yes, it needs to not just be in like a dirt patch. Um, so we just, I wanna work through it. And then just that corner where that sad little yew bush is, like is there something more we can do with that? Um, they did address the lighting issue with the broken, broken awning as you see here. Um, I guess we're gonna go back and forth with the building department that will resolve right. to get that. Um, but their willingness and their, they certainly are actively trying to address that. So. Um, and then we want to obviously, you know, restripe the whole parking lot and just, it just, it just needs <coughs> to be cleaned up, um, quite a bit and then buffer some of the sound and activity in the back. So, um, they, we don't expect a decision tonight. We just wanted to get some feedback since the plan, um, we haven't seen it for a long time, um, as well as the <laughs> applicant is not <coughs> able to be here this evening. So, um, okay. That's where we are. Thank you. Brenda, do you have any questions? Um, you know, I just to your point about the dumpster in the back, I, I would like to see vegetation and fencing. Um, well, the dumpster will be fenced itself. That's a requirement. Of Perfect. But even around <coughs> that fencing, I want yep. some vegetation. That's all I have. Thank you. Bill? Actually, I was to that point. Um, I think I had talked to Kristen earlier today <coughs> on that, you know, between Van Norden and this, I, th I would think vegetation and a fencing would also be appropriate. I think. Yeah. The fencing would be more of a, a visual barrier, and I think the <coughs> vegetation would knock any kind of noise because there's still, there's still going to, I would assume, the fact that they're putting uh, slabs here, they're still going to be having a forklift there, I would imagine, right? There, at, on at times, right? Um, so what I don't know is how would they get a slab from the outside into the building? They're talking about putting some kind of movement um, cranes or something like that. It's not a crane for them, but some way to move the slabs inside the building around without getting it. But they still have to get something in my mind from whatever drops it off into the building itself. Right. right. And I'm not sure their operation, will they take some of the slabs, put them in a truck, bring them to their fabrication place from that, that location, or will it be stored at the fabrication uh, site? And they'll just have all the different types of granite or stone they might have at this location. From what we understand though, it's the the moving around is a lot less with one less in the parking lot and two, <coughs> they're not fabricating. So they're not bringing it in, then bring it out, then bring the pieces out. Then, I mean, it, it, yes, you'll still be moving granite around, but far less than mm -hmm. the original proposal. But there'll still be the backing up of forklift. Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's clearly that's my thought on it, uh, okay. as well as I'd like to see more um, landscaping out, out front as well, with some trees and some things that would How do you feel about the, the, the granite in the, displayed in the front on that, in the grass there? Is that gonna be a, per is that a, a permanent request? Is that? That's what that's, that's If they would like to keep um, some slab granite, at least one out front, to let people know that's what the place is, it's the granite yeah. place. So. Uh, I mean, I, if they're gonna, it, I'll be honest with you, my thoughts on it are if, if they're gonna knock my socks off with landscaping and, and visual uh, aesthetics, then if they wanna keep a, a slab of granite out there, I would be fine with that, but I wouldn't, I, w I really would like to see that all cleaned up and I'd like to see some trees planted and I'd like the barrier in the back to, to be sufficient with fencing and vegetation. 
I mean, I, I think, to me, the, I mean, the, the problem comes in about the display of, I mean, does the display of granite, you know, is it tantamount to a sign? I mean, it's really, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, it's not, I mean, I'm, and I, and be honest with you, I, <clears throat> I mean, I internally am torn with those because I, sandwich signs, I'm not against sandwich signs tastefully done in front of a building when they want to, you know, put the, the daily specials and things like that out there. So is this the same as that? Maybe. I mean, it's just a, it's a much larger scale. So it's a whole different, it really is a whole different, it's a whole set of problems that comes in when they start displaying this big of a, you know, of, of, a, of an item out there. <clears throat> um, I know um, it's been denied to uh, gas stations to be selling water outside and things like that. So, I mean, that, that's probably more along those lines. And I, I'm not sure that we've, it's been allowed anywhere, really, uh, the outward um, storing or displaying of any of, the, of their, uh, you know, their uh, pro, yeah, products that they sell inside. So, but again, I, I'm internally torn on that. <coughs> if somebody were to aesthetically make this place something that it isn't right now and, and, and they said they wanted to do it. I would entertain that if that, if we even have the authority to entertain that, quite honestly, and that's really the question, you know? Okay. Yeah, I think that goes to the point of where you say, what what's there, if it relates to the uh, to the function, then it's a sign, right? Right. Yeah, we've talked yeah. about that before. Okay. We don't have authority to do that. Right. Thank you. I'm oh. glad Joe is troubled about that. <laughs> Trouble about a lot of things. <laughs> Least of all that. <laughs> no, really. My concern has just historically always been the neighbors mm -hmm. first. And I think, you know, we have to approve what's going in because they're right straight across from that. I mean, it's, it's, and it's not a big wide street. And there is a little bit of a banking, but... Uh, Anything that happens on that site is immediately transmitted, whether it's starting up a diesel truck or, or whatever it is. So I would, I would not hesitate regarding the expense that they will not want to do, requiring uh, a, a, a green barrier there with the fence and only acceptable with our approval. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would really pay it. Same thing in back. <coughs> I don't like the dumpster in back at all because yes. you know what's happened even down like uh, uh, on, on off Millsick Street, like the people up on Miller Road, mm -hmm. you know, they're saying, oh no, they're not going to, but five o'clock in the morning, there's some, some dumpster guy <coughs> out there, right. you know, doing the dumpsters. And that's not fair to the neighbors. So I don't know whether we, how we can address that. <coughs> and I, I, would, I would not be opposed to having the dumpster at some place that was more visible if it helped having it backed right up to that house. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mike? Thank you, Madam Chair. Frank, I, I have um, an issue with the, the slab display out front. I go by that twice a week, twice a day, going to work. Are they going to be rotating different types of slabs out there? Or what's the real, I mean, they have a sign that says the granite place. What, what's the real, I mean? Um, <coughs> since I've been involved, which is probably last spring, um, they haven't changed that granite, those granite slabs out there. I will certainly ask that question and see what that might be. Um, Again, I think it's just sort of a um, demonstration of the, the, the product. Oh, it's the place that has the granite slabs out front or something like that is, I think, is what they're... Okay. Whatever. That's called a sign. Yeah, that, well, you, I would, you have a sign that, that <laughs> kind of says that. And I think if they want to do that, they maybe the next meeting, you'd have to come back with a plan that really makes it look nice. I mean, right now, they just look random st standing there like an A-frame. It looks like, almost like a demilitarized zone with those things there. <laughs> so, like... You'd have to like really dress it up for 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 us for me anyway to 
be on board with it. But since we're cleaning the site up anyway, I don't know why, and you have that big sign, I don't know why you need it. Mm -hmm. But just, just my out to if, if you come back with maybe a plan or what it would look like or yeah. how you'd clean it up or how you'd make it look nicer than rather than just a frame out there. Thank you. Phil? Thank you, Madam Chair. I had a couple of things. Uh, so I've been looking at this for a while, as you guys did, and um, I had a lot of pictures from it from the before and after, and I can be honest with you, being there today and taking some more pictures, that the, the after is not as different as, as the before. Um, uh, I went there and we talked about how the, the, the granite had creeped past the curb into the, into the, into the, uh, the natural vegetation there, and I said, okay, now we pulled it back. You go there today, it's going creeping back over, it's curb. creeping back over the curb again. So um, I got to be honest with you, I'm not confident that with this, this 10 foot strip of where they're going to keep, uh, you know, outside granite, that that doesn't, uh, it's going to continue the noise for the neighbors, which I think is the intent of this thing as being kind of a, 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 an accessory use of it, um, that that won't necessarily creep as well. So I, I'm actually not in favor of that 10 foot strip keeping anything outside uh, with regard to the granite slabs. Uh, and, and that would uh, include the two out front. When I go by there, and I go by there a lot, uh, like my, uh, my, my next door neighbor here, um, I think of a safety issue. I see they're, they're on the A-frame, they're strapped in, um, but they're just, they're just out there. Um, as with well, all the slabs were that there was no, there's not, no security that the slabs were in back for, for any of the kids that would be playing around there. So, uh, I, yeah, I wouldn't be in favor at all of, of that uh, with those uh, big slabs out there. Um, with the dumpster, I would agree with uh, Member Raymond that that should not be in the back. That's got to be up. I had a thought on that when you're talking about it that the dumpster actually should go on the other side of the building away from the neighbors. So you've got that neighbor in the back there that came before us. So I think you're thinking of putting the right-hand corner. If you put it, place. right? If you put it over to the left-hand corner, where and nobody's talked about this since the last time I mentioned it, you've got that shipping container with the uh, plow on top of it. So I don't know how that's approved, why the shipping container is still there, what's in it, are they going to get rid of it, you know, what, um, and then maybe that's the right place for the dumpster, right? It's it's on the it'd be on the, the upper left-hand left side. What's that? Back left, Back left corner? corner, yeah. Okay. Is that still closer to the houses, though? It's right, right where your finger is, is that dumpster right there, yeah. Oh. So they got it. house back there, though? Hmm? Uh, not, no, it's, it's actually, I don't think there's another house back there. I think house it's... House is on the right uh, side. There's, right? A, there's oh, a street. Right to the right-hand side. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, so... You're getting to Bill Rooker at some point over here. Yeah, so what you've got is you've got the shipping container. Frank, can you tell me about that shipping container with the dumpster on top? What's, the what's in it, and why is it there, and what's, what's the status of that going to be? I don't know, but I can certainly find out what that is. That'll be the, the second time, I think the first time we met, I asked about yes. that, and I don't think the building inspector noted that, but. The dumpster and Bill Ricca, maybe? Uh, that would be great. I think, I think Bill Ricca and, <laughs> and the plow. No. We could use the plow, actually. As a resident of Bill Ricca, I might object. No. Right. <laughs> so well, they got plenty of But as, as I'll say again, it, it's not on the plan, and it yeah. can't yeah. stay. I mean, unless it's shown on the plan. So, well, so we need an update on when it's going. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, and the other one, I had a question because I, I, I'm not sure I, I'm getting the big picture of what's going on here. So if you go two doors down to that office building-ish with the Gambrel uh, roof on it. Here? No. Uh, no. No, uh, no not, down one more. Over here. Right the there. Okay. The housey Gambrel looking thing. Yes. That's got a sign in it that says Granite Place. What's going on there? The Granite Place has bought that piece of property okay. and they're parking cars here. They're, they're staff. Instead of parking them, they park the staff over What are they there. doing with the building? Uh, right now it's empty, but keep, stay tuned. Huh. Uh, something may be coming on that. Um, so, um, it's not related to the Granite Place, just oh. to let you know. Well, okay. there's, a, there's a Granite Place sign in the window, so I, I'm, I'm assuming it has something to do with the Granite Place. Right. The owners of the Granite Place, Right now, they do not own the, their lot. They're a tenant. Yeah. We'll take yeah. a hold of it. They did buy this lot. It's a very weird lot. It essentially runs right along the edge of what used to be Lester's parking, mm -hmm. and there's a wall. It's a little tiny, sort of trapezoid-shaped lot that's paved from one end to the other, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a, there's a slope down here. There's a retaining wall here. Mm -hmm. This building's right on the um, edge mm -hmm. of the roadway. And they have someone that, that is looking to move in there, a tenant for that building. 
Um, so help me out again. Why is there a sign that says Granite Place on that building? Oh, just because they own it. They own that building and they park. They have staff parks there. But they don't need a sign. There's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing inside there. The, they, they're not using yeah, they don't need a sign there. Can they take the sign out of that building then? I'll, I'll ask them. And so, so like two weeks ago, I saw somebody that was moving something in and out of that building. So uh, is there any storage of granite or tools or something while they're waiting for Wilmington to do that? So is there something going on in that building until the time that Wilmington gets up and running? Not that I'm, I'll find, not that I'm aware of. I've been out looking at that site. I didn't see anybody in the building yep. a couple of times I've been out there, but it's only been a couple of times. There are probably 10 to 12 parking uh, there are probably eight parking spaces they use, and there's a couple other parking spaces for the other buildings a little bit farther to the north that they park in that lot. Uh, actually, I, I, my dentist is in the next one down. They don't, they don't use that one. They, they specified that they don't use that one for parking. I know that was before us before, and they mentioned that. But, um, yeah, may, I don't know if the building inspector can go in there and check out what's going in there because there's something going on in there right now that I saw two weeks ago. So um, maybe they can check that out. There might be... Some, something's going on. But yeah, if they wouldn't mind taking that sign out, because that infers to me that there's something being associated with the two. And then we'd have to take that in consideration with the whole thing. Yep. Big picture for me. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Val. Ready? Uh, just uh, a couple of things. Uh, the landscaping out front, I guess, could somehow or another incorporate maybe a slab of granite. Buried in the ground, sticking okay. up two feet or something, you know, like like you do with the uh, like boulders or whatever. Or, or, yeah, something like that. That, yeah. that might be more uh, okay. acceptable and still show that uh, there was granite there. Um, like the side. My other, my other big uh, big question is: Is there a way? And this is the staff and the applicant and us is the the reason this all came about really was because the neighbors were being adversely affected by a business that was in a correct zone but was doing a little was doing more than they should be at the location so at the meeting not at the meeting that we intend to make a decision on this but maybe the one before it can we get the neighbors back or at least get them notified that something is still going on because you know these things tend to fall off the yeah you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm sure that we have a list, Jen, maybe, as far as I on Do we have a list of the Granite Place neighbors, maybe? Yes. Okay, so maybe if we so could we'll get them notified out. as yes. we get closer to making when a decision. When actually when coming. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, because it's not, keep them informed okay, great. Right. Yeah. it's not worth having them here if we just keep yeah. continuing it, but if we're going to do something substantial, we probably would like their input. Thank okay. you, Ramosa. Okay, thank you. Can um, I just make one other comment quick, please? Yeah. Uh, the, right at the back is a, is a driveway. That was why I was concerned yeah. with yeah. the dumpster. Yeah. Yeah. There's kind of a banking, yeah. but I mean, there's a driveway in the house. So, and if you tell me what a trapezoid is. Uh. Oh, sure. So it's, <laughs> no. imagine, you got to, okay. <laughs> okay. Vacation week, we don't have to All right. I thought that had to do with the circus. <laughs> My turn. Okay. Um, I agree with most of what my fellow board members have said. I want to just repeat. They're going to replace all of the vegetation that they ripped out and put a fence in on the right. Um, we talked earlier today that there have to be signs with the activity hours listed so that everyone knows when they are and are not allowed to have trucks moving around and about. Um, I do not like the idea of having the storage of the granite in front. I think it's a sign. And, and it's also a huge, huge thing. It's, it, they're enormous and hulking. And if somebody drives off the road into one of those things, that's not good. Um, so I would prefer to just see that piece of property spruced up with some nice grass and flowers and make it look pretty. It would improve the look of the business tremendously. Um, as well as the little area on the right that Kristen mentioned that also could be improved. As for the outdoor storage, I also share the concern that Bill expressed about excess noise. I would want to know more about how that would be used, how many of those A-frames would be there, where would they be placed, and would they be just placed there 
and stay there or would there be constant activity moving them in and out of the building? I'd want to know that. I also would prefer that you don't move the dumpster to the back right side, as the other board members have said. You could explore Bill's idea of moving it to the left or you could keep it where it is. I don't think we want to move it as close as possible to the nearest neighbor. That's not a good idea. <laughs> um, so those are my questions. And I think you probably have a lot to go back and talk to your client about. <laughs> It'll probably be next week uh, when great kids are back in school. I think. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, that would be fine. Thank you. Um, so do you have any questions for us? No, I think um, what I might suggest is, um, we'll, so I'll talk with the client, we might check in with the staff to sort of make sure that sure. Um, my interpretation is correct and that if we have some ideas, are these, at least the first blush would be, be something that uh, wouldn't get us kicked out of here immediately, but give us 10 minutes before you kick us out. Um, <laughs> but something like that, just to sort of try to make sure that when we get back together, it can be productive meeting yes. and move ahead. And if you could find out what is happening at that building that they purchased, um, because apparently Member Gaffney has seen activity there, we'd like to know what's happening there. Maybe they're just rehabbing it for their new tenant, which is fine, but um, we- It, it we may be, um, the new tenants are gonna be involved in doing the fit up. I don't know if this is the case. Okay. Um, and so it could have been people that could have been in there measuring things up and looking things. Good. One of the items I'll share with you is that the building is not handicap accessible. And to get to that first floor, it's very, you can't get it from the front because there's no room between Cambridge Street and that. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be, a, a <coughs> to use it, the standard ramps, it's gonna be pretty extensive. It's about a four foot vertical grade mm -hmm. from the back to get up yeah. to that level. So <coughs> that's one thing that we're certainly looking at. Okay. Um, but okay. I'll certainly ask the question of what's going on. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll get a tour and see what's Thank in you. there. Okay, but I'll do thanks that. so much. All right, I think we're ready to continue this. If I may have a motion. Motion to continue in this matter of the planning board meeting on March 5th. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seven zero. Thank you, Thank Frank. Thank you both very much. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, next on our agenda are the minutes. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes that Liz sent around? Yes. Great. Anybody have any comments or changes they want to make that they haven't already informed staff of? I cannot vote on the uh, minute D. So okay, we so we should take them separately. individually? Okay. At least okay. that one separately. Okay, um, why don't we just vote on the first three then together? Does that sound good? Sure. Okay. Um, so I'm looking for a motion to accept the minutes of October 16th, 2019, 11, um, November 7th, 2019, and November 21st, 2019. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, so it's 601, and then we'll take- Make a motion to approve the minutes from December 5th, 2019. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. So then that one's 502. Thank you. Um, discussion items. Um, we have been asked to appoint a member from this board to the Solar Committee, which is being run by Monty Pearson. Um, there's, and I think that, I hope everyone has seen that um, basically the committee is, the Solar Advisory Committee is going to be evaluating a proposed amendment to the general bylaw that would mandate that for new construction and major renovations, larger businesses and major town government buildings would be required to place solar panels on their roofs. So that's what this committee will be exploring. And I would fain, I've heard that you would be willing to take it on. Thank you, Brenda. <laughs> All right, we have our member. I know Monty was anxious to get started, so I appreciate you doing that, thank you. Um, the other thing I wanted to just quickly mention, um, I've been speaking with staff about the master plan and mm. how we, you know, we're probably about 95% done. <laughs> we just kind of want to finish it up. So. I think what makes sense, perhaps, Kristen, is to have staff circulate the latest and greatest to everybody on the board, ask everybody to give it a fresh look, fresh set of eyes, so that we can finally complete it and get it signed off on. So I'd like to try and get that done, I don't know, by April or May. Does that seem reasonable? Yes. Amen. Okay. Yes, if you 
lock me in a room for a week, I can probably get it. Okay, we can do done. That. We can do I just that. need to not. Well, be I know you've been <laughs> short staffed, and so that's. So Brady starts change. next week. Um, right. I know uh, it's been too long, um, and then all these really other exciting things happen, yeah. and then we're really busy, yeah. and then. Um, but th we have had tremendous amount of comments. It's just really just. And Pushing everything together. Getting it together, and then I do need readers. Um, I definitely would like to circulate it again, and then have sp some of you who really want to really who love editing, <laughs> all that stuff, kind of get into just just readers to try to just make form sure. it all up to make sure we're all set, and then um, kind of put it in the hands to some of our other staff who know how to format things exactly perfectly. And I have missed Liz a lot this week on silly things about <laughs> formatting that she is just a goddess of formatting. So. Um, and then just getting it done. And yeah. Yeah, I, it's, yes. Well, let's set it as a goal to have it done by the beginning of May, and we'll all just, you know, reach out right. to us yeah. and tell us what we can do to help because we can pitch in and, and yes. do our part. We want to get Great. it done. Okay. Um, Member Raymond had something he wanted to discuss. Just, I want to say, I have questions about the constitution of the committee because at the beginning, I was tossed off the committee illegally. Which I did, excuse the me. Master plan. plan I, I didn't know which committee you were talking about, sorry. Uh, I'm talking about the master plan. Uh, and so I asked town council about it. She said, yeah, no, they can't do that. But they did it. At any rate, so I just want to reserve my ability to uh, comment or whatever on it because I consider it not legal. You definitely can. You definitely can comment right. because it comes to this board. Right. It's this board that has to approve it and move it forward. So, you definitely have full power to comment and make suggestions and changes as you would like. Thank you. I mean, at this point, it's here. Yeah. It's Say what? It, at this point, it's, it's, it's here. Responsibility it's responsibility now. It's ours right now. So you're well, you're front and center engaged right now. Right. Right. I, mean, I understand yeah. your frustration, yeah. Paul, and I said. Well, it's not frustration. It's just illegal. Because well, I, I said to town, I said to town council, can they do that? She said no. But I said, well, they did it. So, yeah. so um, yes, you definitely have full power to review and edit at this stage, as we all do. Um, did anyone have any other items they wanted to bring forward? No. All right. We're gonna. We're meeting my goal of motion to adjourn. Right. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, 7-0. Good night, everyone. If anybody doesn't...